A planet 124 light years away is pumping out gas that, on Earth, only life makes. That same world is also loaded with methane and carbon dioxide, again, signs of life. And just 20 light years from us, a planet orbits a calm, sun like star with the right conditions to maybe, just maybe, host life. This is disturbing evidence of alien life found on exoplanets we just discovered. HG 20794D is a pretty intriguing find, mostly because it's one of the closest potentially habitable planets we've spotted, and it's only about 20 light years away. That's practically next door compared to most exoplanets, so astronomers can study it in more detail than almost any other world. It also orbits a sun-like star at just the right distance to possibly have liquid water. HD 20794D is pretty calm and stable as well. And that sun-like star is pretty calm and stable too. Younger or more active stars can spit out huge flares and blasts of radiation that can just fry its surface, but this planet isn't doing that, which gives it a much better chance to hold on to air for billions of years. Scientists think the planet is at least the size of Earth, maybe a bit bigger, which also means it could have a solid surface instead of being a gas ball. Astronomers just spotted a gas in the atmosphere of a planet 124 light years away, and it's something that on Earth, life only makes. That is a pretty big deal. This is probably the biggest clue we have so far that life could exist on other planets, aside from, of course, probability alone. The planet's called K218b and the gas is dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. On Earth, tiny ocean organisms called phytoplankton pump this stuff out. It's basically just a byproduct of them living their little plankton lives. So when scientists found it on K218b, everyone was basically like, well, could there actually be life there? Before you start imagining alien oceans and alien plankton, they're being careful about this. There's always the chance this gas could show up from some weird non-living chemical reaction, but the fact that we can even detect it from 124 light years away is pretty cool. The James Webb Telescope is that sensitive, picking up tiny molecules way out in alien atmospheres. And DMS is one of the few things we know of that life produces naturally. So yeah, it doesn't prove anything 100%, but it's easily one of the wildest hints we've ever gotten that something alive could exist outside our solar system. So K218b is already wild because of the dimethyl sulfide, but that's not all. Scientists also found methane and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. On Earth, both those gases, again, can come from living things. Microbes, plants, humans in our case, but they can also be made by non-living things like volcanoes or chemical reactions. That's what makes this discovery so exciting but tricky at the same time. The fact that all three gases, DMS, methane, and carbon dioxide, are showing up together though, that's what really gets people excited. It's like finding three pieces of a puzzle that might fit together to hint at life. Even though we can't say for sure there is life, seeing this combination of gases in a planet's atmosphere that's in the habitable zone, meaning it could have liquid water, that's exactly the kind of thing some scientists just dream about. NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, discovered a planet called TOI-700e. It's a world about the size of Earth, sitting in the habitable zone of its star. Again, that basically means it's at the right distance to maybe have liquid water. Not too hot, not too cold. And if there's water, there could be life. Scientists are especially excited because this exoplanet is one of the few Earth-sized planets we've found that's actually in this sweet spot. Planet is a little bigger than Earth, but it could have a similar surface, maybe even oceans. We don't know exactly what it looks like yet, but with telescopes like James Webb, we might be able to get a look at its atmosphere and soon see if it has gases that could hint at life. And TOI-700e is relatively close, in space terms. Anyway, it's only about 100 light years away, which is basically in our neighborhood compared to a lot of other exoplanets we've discovered. So the idea that there's a planet that may have water, maybe life, floating around a nearby star, that's pretty exciting. Here's a crazy one. The James Webb Space Telescope just found a planet that was basically hiding in plain sight. It's called TWA-7b. It was found inside the dusty debris disk around a young star. These debris disks are basically clouds of leftover material from former stars. JWST's insane sensitivity finally let astronomers spot it directly, which is a huge deal because spotting exoplanets is usually like trying to see a firefly next to a spotlight. TWA-7b is especially interesting because it's around a very young star. We're talking just a few million years old. That sounds very old, but 
In terms of space, that's basically a baby star. And that could mean the planet is still forming or has an unusual atmosphere. The James Webb Telescope can even study the light coming from the planet to see what it's made of, which could tell us if there's anything in its atmosphere that might give us clues about life existing there. Next up, let's talk about techno signatures. This is basically the idea of looking for signs of alien technology instead of just biological life. It'd be a bit like looking for the lights of a distant city while out sailing at night or sniffing for weird chemicals in the air that wouldn't be there naturally. Astronomers are hunting for things like industrial pollution, radio signals, laser flashes, stuff that could mean an advanced civilization is doing civilization stuff. The cool part is that some of these signatures would be way easier to spot than, you know, a tiny microbe floating in an atmosphere. For example, if we detected a gas in an exoplanet's atmosphere that here on Earth only comes from factories or cities, that would be a massive clue that intelligent life could be living there. Scientists are even brainstorming ways to spot things like megastructures, huge artificial objects around a star. How would they detect something like that from so far away? Well, by the way the light dims or flickers. Say there was a massive solar panel array around a star. Sounds crazy, but the trick is all about how starlight behaves when these objects are in the way. Normally, when a planet passes in front of its star, it blocks a tiny bit of light, which is how we find exoplanets in the first place. The star dims a little at regular intervals. Now imagine a super huge structure it would block more light or block it in weird irregular patterns. The telescope can detect these strange dips in brightness, flickers, and that's basically a clue that something artificial could be orbiting the star. The whole field is kind of new, and there's a lot of debate about what even counts as a solid techno signature, but it's a pretty interesting way to think about finding aliens. Instead of just looking for life like us, we're looking for signs what they've built. And another twist on searching for alien life, more on looking for pollution. Weird as it may sound, scientists are considering that industrial chemicals in a planet's atmosphere could be a clue that life exists there. Take chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs for example. Humans make these in factories, and they stick around in the atmosphere for a long time. If we saw CFCs on another planet, that could be a dead giveaway that some civilization was living there. Detecting stuff like this is tricky though. The telescope has to be insanely sensitive, and the planet has to be at the right distance and angle so the atmosphere can be analyzed. Still, it's exactly the kind of creative thinking that could tell us we're not alone in the galaxy. If even one of these pollutants is spotted on a distant planet, it would be a game changer. TRAPPIST-1e is about the same size as Earth and sits 40 light years away, which in space terms is practically next door. What's really cool is that it's in the habitable zone of its star. That alone makes it interesting, but the James Webb Space Telescope has taken things to another level. Scientists have been studying its atmosphere and they've found hints of gases like nitrogen, which is super important for life on Earth, plus some signs that water could exist. We don't know for sure if TRAPPIST-1e has oceans or rivers, but just spotting an atmosphere with the right mix of gases is a huge deal. It means this planet could, in theory, support life like we know it. And TRAPPIST-1e orbits a star much dimmer than the sun, so its year is super short, only about six Earth days, which makes the climate really different from ours, but even with that, the idea that a planet could have water and a breathable atmosphere, all while being just 40 light years away, that's exactly why it's considered one of the most promising spots to hunt for alien life. L9859F is a super Earth, which means it's bigger than our planet, but not so huge that it's a gas giant. And again, what makes this exciting is that it's in the habitable zone of a nearby red dwarf star, basically the perfect distance where liquid water might exist on the surface. I know I keep harping on water possibly existing on these planets, but water, as we know, is kind of a big deal if you're looking for life. The star it orbits is smaller and cooler than our sun, which means the planet gets less heat, but just enough to potentially support oceans or lakes, and it's even closer than TRAPPIST-1e, only about 35 light years away. So imagine being able to spot things like oxygen or methane in the air of a planet this close. Scientists are also looking for phosphine in the atmospheres of exoplanets. On Earth, phosphine is mostly made of microbes living in oxygen-free environments like 
deep in swamps or soil without air. It doesn't just appear naturally in big amounts otherwise, so spotting it somewhere else could be a big deal. The idea is that if astronomers detect phosphine in the atmosphere of a planet that doesn't have oxygen, it might mean something alive is producing it, even if it's nothing like us. I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, next time. Thank you.